So we have successfully built our first Flask application where we have provided the routing. We just initially gave slash and we have seen what does our function have written the same thing not in the ideally I mean not in the interactive shell we have seen the result in the browser with the help of a URL that's where we have seen this routing and when you change the extension you can just make it but now what we'll do is we'll try to add a variable section so that when we add that thing to our function because we did not give any argument in our function which is hello but now I'll just try to pass an argument to my function so that that function receives the variable name as a keyword argument so optionally what we can do we can try to specify it when we just write the slash with the function with the argument decide with the argument given in the function we can just return the result right so let's just go for that that means i am providing another routing here at the rate app dot route it's all about how do you navigate to web pages simple right when you open a web page something like if you want to go to mobile section you click that you see the results of only mobile phones the task of the backend programmer is to just make sure you connect the particular web pages you see the url is different here and if you try to change anything within this what happens see if i just try to remove this and if i try to execute it if i just remove all of this and if i just execute this what happens looking for something we are sorry that's how that specific url is not found because how can you give slash mobile phones because amazon.in is referring with this navigation so that is how those are specified urls for that in the same way we'll provide routing for this where i just mentioned at the rate app dot route i'll just give slash and i want to pass an argument which is name so this is my variable name where generally we use these tags we are these are generally called as tags with the help of less than and greater than symbol which we predominantly use in stylings this is very very important that means we are just trying to pass a variable name the variable name is written in less than and greater than symbol so variable name so that is how we have just passed the argument over there and the same thing i'll try to define to a function so my function name will be show name so that i can give that as an argument here show name of i can pass the argument what is the argument name i can give name because i've just given the same thing in my routing and i'll pass the same thing over here and this is nothing but passing an argument i write it as doc string so that it is very much essential when you write a doc string you could see what is that particular function is returning so never ever forget to just go with this simple basics which you have learned from the beginning this is very very important and then i should return here where i can just go with the formatted string or anything because that is a print that is a string over there i just go for f string and what i do is i want the result to should be telling that specifically your name is so when i use format string you will replace the variable name in curly braces right that's what we have studied the same thing if you don't want to use all of them you can just give string comma variable it's up to you because we have learnt already such kind of things now the same thing when i just run with slash socket i should see this result but when i give slash particular name i should see your name is right that's what it is affecting because if i give slash socket it is expecting and if i give this thing both are resulting same right so just don't get confused with that then what we can do is we can just change this because i'll just execute because whenever we run this routing so first let's save this and debug is equal to true so that whenever we give debugging debug is equal to true we are debugging during development so debug is equal to false that is for deployment to a production server always remember that point so we generally go for giving debug is equal to true whenever we are routing in our development not in the production because in production it completely changes whenever you are going for production type we just make sure we do the small changes whenever you are going for that's where the wsgi works of development server provides a debugger that's what whenever we are installing flash we have all those dependencies directly available now i'll open my windows explorer so that i can run the particular file from command prompt so type cmd the reason is i cannot expect everyone to have the directly desktop available with root c location because some so many people will have their one drive being backed up over there that is the reason just choose desktop 
to your left side and type cmd over there there you go you give python now what is your program name it's basically first flash so we give first flash dot pi there you go it is serving your first flash cap and debugger pin is same so when you just copy this url and paste it in the browser when you paste in the browser it is giving this is my first flask application because I did not mention any routing over there automatically it is giving so when I mention slash socket over there let me just throw it when I give slash socket your name is socket because automatically there is no difference in between in both the programs over there because you are passing a variable name right so to make it more easy let's just remove this that is the reason there is no need to pass routing directly. You need to pass with variable name so that you can write that as arguments in your function. Now we will find the difference. You can see there is some change in our code automatically running. And now when you refresh this web page, so just remove all of them. When you execute this, there you go. It shows you this is your first flask application because we have just mentioned the same thing in our routing. This is my first flask application with slash as routing. When we pass the variable name, that means whenever you pass anything with an extension with that. If I give slash socket, there you go, your name is socket. And you can trace back the same thing in your command prompt, the request being fetched. If it's not visible, just give control C. You can just understand how does that is being quit and just execute once more. You can see the difference, how, was the, how does that is being executed. Just refresh it. The number of times you hit refresh, the number better you get the get requests over there. So that's how you can just understand how does that is being executed. So the only change we have done is we have just make sure that we have given routing. So if you just execute this, restarting with start and press control C to quit. If I give control Z, if I give control C, I'm just coming it out. So just make sure you find the routings over there because until and unless if I execute this, see, I just came out of it. It already being executed, right? So if there is no issues. If I execute once more, if I just give slash, this is my first flag because already that is being executed. Now, if I just close this and if I save it and if I run it in my interactive cell, what happens over there? Just observe it here. Same, serving with fast. It doesn't provide you any URL because we are running it from the interactive mode. That is the main difference. So for that reason only, I just made you to run it from your command prompt. That is CMD. So just give Python and throw first flash. Sorry, I just gave the name as wrong. So P-Y-T-H-O-N. There you go. You just get the URL. And when you just make it request, you can easily see when you just pass the URL to your web, you just copy the URL, paste it. There you go. This is my first flask application and you could see every time you get to get the, you could see the get request that is fine. Now what we'll do is if you just change this, if you just give slash socket, you could see your name is socket. That's how we are passed the routing. But now what we can do is we can add, we can make sure that we will get a public URL because this is where you can see only in your local system, but you cannot observe this thing. Once you close this, it's gone. But now what we can do is we can use a public tunneling server, which is called as ngrock so that we'll get a free URL for a particular period of time and we can use it because ngrock is one of the very widely used tunneling servers. So when you go for ngrock, when you just type ngrock, it provides you secure introspectable tunnels to local host where mainly for testing purpose, it is fine for testing your chatbot. I mean, we have built a virtual assistant, right? You can just make sure you deploy it. That's where we just use only three steps. We'll first install ngrock because Python has supporting packages for ngrock combining with flask because flask will provide a local URL so that you open the URL in your browser. You can see whatever your function you're giving that is navigating, but public URL that is being sent only by ngrog. When you have so many other domains, I mean, so many other providers to host your applications, but ngrog is pretty much simpler. Even you go for pricing, he'll tell you because with the, with the free source, he provides you HTTPS tunnels along with HTTP and four tunnels per one ngrog process, only 40 connections, only one online ngrog process. When you go for paid model, you have some different options over here. 
for five dollars, eight point two five, twelve dollars. You have you can customize your domains that is reserved domains and tunnels can be increased. You have all of this. So for that, we'll just install ng rock with flash. That is, you can give flash hyphen ng rock. Automatically, it will show you where you can get this because it will tell you pip install because already you can use you already know this where you can search all the packages with find install publish python packages you can just type flash hyphen ng rock in this or you can directly go to the web because it automatically gives you a simple way to dom demo our flash applications from your machine so that it provides a local so it is running it makes your flask app running on local host to be available over the internet so that's what we are going to see now we just install that so for that reason i'll just quit this i'll give pip install flask hyphen ng rock it should be installed you should have proper good internet connection if it is satisfying requirements it will tell your requirement already satisfied if you have installed already, if you are for the first time, it will just collect the things because see Jinja to template and markup safe and work zug, everything is being supported with the flask. Now, once it is successfully installed, he'll tell in the documentation. So you need not refer any other tutorials. It's very simple. He'll just tell run to run with ngrock, whatever the flask object you have created and then make sure we run the application. Let's add those three lines and make our flask app to be deployed that's the main theme of this so before giving routing and before running this we just need to give from flask underscore ng rock not hyphen because when i give hyphen it takes as a separation over there because you just need to run this ng rock li library with flask so that we have already installed it so that's where from flask underscore ng rock, you need to import run with ng rock. So that's what you can see. Make sure when you are using this for testing, make sure you need to have Wi Fi, not the LAN connection. Because your firewall will block and you need to make so many changes. Because whenever you are running ng rock, it will try to make connection with your local host and it will connect to ng rock server. Again, because API, right, it takes requests, it takes, it gives you response. So in that time, you have so much of delay and it takes very long time and it may not give you result also. So just make sure you are having Wi-Fi. If you don't have Wi-Fi, you can just make sure hotspot is done, right? Make sure if you are having LAN, connect it to Wi-Fi. Remove the LAN and connect with the, connect to a Wi-Fi so that you can run this ng -Rock. That is main thing you should remember. And even you go for any resources studying about that, you just need to make sure you just need to connect to a Wi-Fi. That is very, very important. Once you made this from flask underscore ngrock, import run with ngrock. And before routing, just make one change. You need to run the specific application with run with ngrock. You just need to make sure you run the application with ngrock. Whatever the variable you gave for routing, this variable, because we are running the flask application, we are routing it. We are just routing number of things. That's where the request comes. Get, post, put, delete, which we are trying to understand in the next couple of videos. The same thing. And in the final thing, there is no need of debugging here. You can just give the application should run. That's it. There is no need of providing debugging because when we give debug is equal to true, that is into, we are into for development. When we go for deployment for a production server, it is false. So here, as we are taking a free tunneling server, whenever you run this application, even in your IDLE, it will open with a URL. But when you run from command prompt, it opens a tunnel over your command prompt. That's what you're going to observe now. So just make sure once you install ngrog, you need not have LAN. You shouldn't have LAN connection. Just switch that thing to Wi-Fi. That's the only primitive thing you need to observe. So when I run this code from command prompt, I just open Python, P-Y-T-H-1, Python and my program name is first flash dot o p y. Just observe clearly, you can see a tunnel being coming up over there along with the connections, how many connections being made and the response time, everything. There you go. You see, you observe it clearly. You can see first time if it is closing it out, that means you have successfully installed and open once again 
and run from your command prompt. It takes time to reload. That is the reason it has just vanished. But now if I open again, I could see a tunnel being opened up. There you go. No need to worry. You can see a tunnel being opened up. There you go. ng rock by at the rate, reviewable, control C to quit. There is no command prompt now. This is being overridden and it tells you, it gives you one hour 59 minutes. The version of it, it is providing you one hour 59 minutes. For longer tunnels, you need to sign up the interface and this is the forwarding URL because we can make only limited number of connections. That's what ngrock will give you. See four tunnels per ngrock process, 40 connections per minute. It's only one online tunnel. So if you copy this URL, this is your HTTP and this is your HTTP because it is forwarding with the local host. When you copy this, when I copy this, you can see running ngrock and you can see the traffic on this URL. And when I paste it on the web browser, there you go. When you paste it, you can see you did not give any routing over there. This is the first flask application. And when you give slash any variable name, you could see your name is socket. This is secured one. You could see over there and you can observe the traffic stats also the number of connections. See get socket, get favicon and traffic stats is available in this particular URL. Copy this and uh, you can forward this to your friend. He can open it. See he'll provide you. You are using Injurac without an account. The session will end in 1 or 28 minutes. You can see the requests over there and you could see whatever you have typed over there, we could just navigate here. The summary of it, the headers and what is the raw content and the binary file, everything over there. Whatever we have seen in the command prompt, we could navigate. Let me just minimize this. You could see, right. So now this is the get favicon, the summary and the summary headers and the raw files and the status next thing you could see here. And with the summary, this is my first flask application. That's what you can just set the traffic status also. That is the best thing when you go with ngrog and you could see until and unless this channel is open, you could see the same thing happening over there, right? So make sure you just see when you refresh this, you could easily navigate, you could easily see the number of times the tunnel is being hitting. You could see the connections over there. When you refresh it, you could see the changes over the number here. That's what it provides you 40 connections per minute and even it's better to use secured one. If you run this thing from here, suppose if I close this and if you run the same thing in your shell, you just see it from in your, in your, in your interactive mode, it provides you a tunnel like this, it provides you the same result and again the tunnel is being changed, the tunnel ID is being changed. If I refresh the previous web page, you see a tunnel is not found, ngrog.io is not found because it is providing you a new tunnel. That's what. You can just share it to your friend and make sure you access the same thing. You just run the same application. You should not close it. Even you use any IDE, that's the same process. So when I give slash socket, you could see your name is because we have just passed the same thing over our routing. Whether you use, you, whether you go from your command prompt or whether you go from your interact, I mean, system prompt or in your interactive mode, anything you could get to see the result when you are running ngrog because it provides your public URLs for testing. That's what even for Raspberry Pi and even for a Python applications, anything, we can just use it until and unless this session is running. It's for testing mode, right? You can just use it. You can get the requests over it. You can get the status over this URL because he clearly mentioned you can get the status over this URL. Anyways, you can run in any way. That's how we have hosted our Flask application on ngrog. I hope you have enjoyed watching it. If you have liked our content, please do hit like button and do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more useful content and exciting updates. If you want to learn such practical content at an affordable cost with Microsoft certification and instructor support, please register at academy.codenan.com. You can also download app from Play Store as Codenan. Never hesitate to raise queries in the comment section. And please do reply with your suggestions for more practical videos. We'll be happy to come up with it. Thank you.